Hi, and welcome to the Bookkeepers Podcast. I'm Zoe Whitman. I'm here with Joe Wood. Hi, Joe. How are you? Hi, Zoe. I am good. I am good. We've got a bit of a change of plan today, but we're going with the flow. Me and Zoe are popping on. We were meant to have um, auto entry, but we are ch- changing things up, and uh, they will be joining us again at another point. So we thought, what we're going to do? What we're going to talk about? And um, the one thing that's majorly on our minds at the moment. So we thought we'd just come along and share our journey. Yeah, I think it's nice to know behind the scenes, isn't it? Um, we, last week, actually, we went in. We went to South Wales with a group of our bookkeepers and accountants, members of our programme, and actually some people who haven't worked with us on our programme before as well. So it was a really nice mix. And we just had a lot of time together and we asked for feedback. We were, you know, did lots of training. We had some amazing guests come and spend some time with us. And when we asked for feedback at the end of that, one of the things that really came back was people want to like be part of the journey and be part of the story and um, understand more about what's happening behind the scenes. So when we had this opportunity to have a chat today and we obviously we have this massive project on right now launching our book, we were like, let's just show you behind the scenes so you can see what kind of journey we've been on because this is something we've been working on for well most of this year to be honest I think probably it was it seriously started as a project this spring didn't it um but we yeah March been time, yeah. for a long time mm-hmm. and uh, and then we finally were like right we've actually got to get this written now um but and it's taken you know we're not we were just into November so it has taken us quite a while to get there although maybe I suppose it depends on your perception of time um, yeah but it's been what's journey. interesting it's ju- it's a journey but the thing is what's really interesting is when you're living something and you're doing it you don't think anyone else would be interested in what you're doing because it's just your life do you know what I mean yeah so, and I think this is something that we learned at the retreat um about personal brand and things like that we might think well this is just what I do but other people will be really interested in the more you share the more they can connect and think I've been part of that journey as well and and we do it with other people. We watch other people's journeys, celebrities and, you know, things. That are, I mean, Zoe's favourite, Married at First Sight, you know, her programme that she watches. You watch them through this journey and you see it's like documentary. You feel like, and we love it and we lap it up because, you know, you feel like you're part of the relationship at the end of it. You feel like you know everything about it, but you don't. But you feel like, and that's what everybody wants. So um, so we're like, we need to practice what we preach for. And yeah. let's just just share and talk to you. What before before it even launches, what is the massive process we've been through so far? Yeah, and um hi everyone who's joining as well. Um if you've got any questions as well about the book, what's in the book, um, how you can buy it, or like what part of the you know, so if you're interested in something that happened in the journey, uh please ask your questions because we love to have a chat about this. Um I think that's it, Joe. Like we talk all the time about building your personal brand, raising your profile, making sure people know who you are and what you do. That like that for all of you watching this, that's how you find clients. You make sure people mm-hmm. know who you... my in-laws were here, Joe, this afternoon, and um, my brother-in-law is involved in a, a some kind of project he's consulting on or something. And he was talking to the accountant, and the accountant said, "Oh, I know Zoe Whitman," and uh, <laughs> I was like, "I hope that's a good thing." Um, but it, that's the thing, really. You want people to say, "Oh, I know so and so," or if they're thinking, "I need somebody to support me with my bookkeeping and accounting," you want your name to spring to mind and the only way to do that is to get known and we know we talk to Ashley Leeds all the time about bit you know people buy from people they know like and trust and he talks about LinkedIn all the time wherever you are however you're showing up or wherever you're showing up it's really important to build that personal brand and this is part of that for us like maybe you're not on a journey to write a book but there are things you're doing like I'm thinking about um people who share things like them walking in nature and swimming in the sea and all of those kind of things that are nothing to do with what you do for a living it's all the stuff that people want to know about that's what makes you a human Mm -hmm. being so um let's let's all do that okay okay so um, we thought what we'd do is start with like why we wrote the book. So if you if you don't know about it, and um, we've got a book called The Bookkeeper Rises, which is out this month. Um, and at the moment, I've got a I've got a proof here for anyone who's watching this and not listening to it. I've got a proof of the cover. I don't have an actual uh, book version of it to show you, but it's going to look like that. And um, and we really wanted to we really wanted to write it because. We wanted to take you for people who maybe want to bring together a lot of what they hear from us or who've been through boot camps with us and maybe they're familiar with our RISE framework. We really wanted to set out some of the real fundamental principles of what we share with bookkeepers day in, day out. 
Um, mm. I think you, if you listen to the podcast, you've picked up different bits of stories and um, sometimes it's kind of hard to piece that together. So we wanted to bring it all into one place. So that was our like starting point. How do we get this written down in a way that people can really make use of it and be and almost like have a guide, like this is what I need to do to yeah. build a practice that's going to work for me. And I think that's one of the most important things that me and Zoe have learned on this journey is that, um, and, and I'm not talking just about the book, but being content creators that we are these days, is that people consume things in different ways. So we could say it on a podcast, we could say it on a video, but somebody reading it in a book might process it differently and want to process. And like, I can even, you know, really it is that kind of book you could end up with highlighters and little sticky bits and like, I must visit that bit again. It really is like, we kind of put it in a systematic way, all the things that we just talk about all the time, but we mostly said it over so many different ways. And, you know, it's nice to have something in a concise, mm -hmm. and that's something we were really, we're like, we have got so much we want to say, let's put it in a way that's kind of systematic and in a book. And so that was one of the reasons that, but also being really honest, it's about, about personal brand as well. It's about having that credibility. It's about sharing what, at what our stuff in another way but it's also having that credibility stamp that we have produced a book that's been mm -hmm. published and that is it's not easy I mean we're <laughs> going to go through all the steps it's not easy and it's um I wouldn't say it's like the worst thing and the hardest thing I've ever done either but it's also it's it's definitely I don't it's 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 a process that you've got to go through and I know and I can feel like me and Zoe feel like we can see a light at the end of the tunnel now that this little this project is nearly done and we are going to feel so amazing and proud of ourselves when it, we we did when we got whenever we've had some part of like the proof that it's getting closer to the end of the journey we're already feeling that pride um but yeah it's like it's a part passion project but it's also like we're in business. What do you need to do? What are the assets you need to have in your business to prove who you are and um, and that you're somebody to listen to? So that's part of it as well. Yeah. The other thing, of course, was we really wanted to share other people's stories and journeys because oh it's one thing us sitting here saying, like doing a podcast every week and saying, you need to do this. You need to do this. Um, and we believe you do. These are the things we really believe you need to do. Everything in the RISE framework is what we think you need to do. But hearing from other people who have done those things and are now building businesses that work for them is a whole other level. So we, when we started this journey, we reached out to people in, the, in our community um, and we said, you know, would you like to be part of it? Would you be prepared to share your story? And we were overwhelmed with people who said, yes, I want to be a part of it. And we're so lucky and fortunate that we've been able to include the stories of 35 bookkeepers and accountants in the book as well, which I think just reading that, it, just hearing people's backgrounds, why they've joined the profession, whether they've been in the profession forever or whether they've come to it later in life and what their motivations are and what this now means they can do. It's such a massive deal. And like for us, we felt really really um humbled I think that people wanted yeah. to be a part of it and come and share their story oh yeah absolutely and that and that again proves the point it's not it's not maybe just about the form that the information is being told in but by the person and the tone so you we wanted to put the like the step-by-step -step, what you need to do to have you know a successful bookkeeping practice but then with that self-belief because you need to hear from someone else that has a similar kind of background to you to make you think, okay, this is, this is for me too. It, because otherwise, if it was just a book by me and Zoe, you'd be like, but it's okay for them. You'd have that little voice in your head saying, it was okay for them because whatever the because was, whether it's true or not, that's what your head you know, will tell you. But you may pick up that book and read someone's story in there and be like, oh, I've got no excuses anymore because they are either in a work, they were in a worse position or that's where I'm at. So if they can do it. So it's, it was like, yeah, putting that self-belief model alongside the, like the strategy. Oh, it's interesting you said that actually, because um, when we were working out, I mean, the stories are listed alphabetically, like there's no, like there's no secret to how the stories are listed at the back of the book, but um, or the second half of the, the back of the book just doesn't, I mean, it's half of the book, people's stories, you know, 
Um, but when we were looking at them and the responses we had, and Joe's been doing some research on our community as well. So if you're in the Six Figure Bookkeepers Club, you will have seen a poll she put out yesterday saying, you know, what, where are you in your journey and what is it that you need to grow your business? And, um, and we were looking at the stories and we were able to kind of group people together. It was almost like, like there were people who were, like their children had grown up and moved out and they were looking for something that they could do that would give them more flexibility. There were people who'd started their practices for health reasons. There were people who'd always been in the industry, but maybe they'd been employed by somebody so you could like see these groups emerging and it was almost mm -hmm. like should we set it up based on well if you're this kind of person you can go to this page and then you can read these stories of these people who are like you but actually to just see that whole range of stories it, like, how they are now alphabetically ordered is it takes you on a real emotional roller coaster I think reading that so part. emotional <laughs> <laughs> so so emotional so it was really important for us you know me and Zoe, one of our main values is community. So it was really important for us to include our community in the book. Um, and we're just so thrilled that we had 35 of them that actually took up the challenge um, and, and joined us on the journey and really, really pleased that they did that. So next we, we had, to, so we, we'd cut, we structured the book. We had the stories coming in. I mean, Zoe has been a trooper, like, collating, organizing, checking things. And then people would say, oh, my business has changed. I've actually changed my whole name on my business. Can I update that, that bit? Or I don't want to include that bit. So we, the longer the journey is, the more things that need you to get changed. I think the more you know, people involved, the more it becomes this massive beast. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did become a bit of a beast. And then we kept changing things like, oh my goodness, the community's grown. Should we be saying this amount of people in the community? Yeah. Or should we say more? Uh, I think we stuck with whatever we said in April in the end, because we're like, no, this is a journey. Yes, it's coming out later, but this is where we're at in April. Um, and then we were thinking about who would we like to write the foreword for the book, um, you know, to get that, again, that credibility stamp that this book is worth reading. Mm. Um, and we we had we were having a good thing, but James Ashford for us just seemed like the guy for the job. And I can't remember exactly, I think we reached out, um, I know we met him at a Countex in London, bumped into him, and I remember we were chasing him up for it, mm. like, have you have you he's like oh yeah it's it's on my list it's on my list and and what was really really strange is that firstly every everything is a um we have we realized our limiting beliefs along the way and so actually asking James would you write that we were like oh I remember when he said yes we were like yay you know it's great that, that someone said yes to that opportunity and like because I thought they could have said well it's not really part of you know our thing like, and that would have been fine but he said oh yeah I'd love to and we're like brilliant and so when we bumped into him at Accountex he he said to us um so how's the audiobook coming along or something and we were like no no it's not an audiobook and he's like well how do you two uh consume books and we went well audiobooks <laughs> and he was like right so do you think you need to write oh we were like oh my goodness because our our threshold like was not there that level to jump like, I don't know what it is like being a published author was that point having him write the forward was that and then audiobook no one's gonna we just yeah. and I know we're on a podcast now and people listen to us but it hadn't even entered our head and this is this is like this is why processes and journeys you're having to expand your belief in yourself constantly throughout this and then we were like okay that's gonna cost money do we do we do that ourselves? And we thought about yeah. putting our garages out with egg boxes yeah. and using garage bands. And well, that was the conversation we had. We were like, yeah. we were literally outside of Countex queuing up. You know, when you're, if you've been, you know, you're out there and you're kind of waiting to get in just as they're about to open. I think we were waiting to get our badges or something just as you get them printed off the scanner or if you haven't printed your own at home. <laughs> it's like totally right. life. But, um, <laughs> we were talking to James outside and um, him, he was saying, well, this is how you do it. If you wanted to record it yourself, you could just edit it all on GarageBand. And he was like, you can get one of these clickers and you click, click if you make a mistake and then you can hear it when you're editing it in GarageBand. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, feel like we could do that ourselves. And then we kind of looked at each other and we're like, there's no way that will ever happen. But I really think that, you know, we talk quite often about like investing in yourself, investing in the things that are going to make a difference in your business in the long run. Um, we could have done it ourselves and we would have, I'm sure we, it would have been absolutely fine. Um, and it would have taken us a load of time, probably would have added more time, but we probably could have got it sorted in a few weeks if we just like got our heads down and got on with it. 
but sometimes you just know you need to work with somebody who's going to do something properly and professionally with you and it's going to be worthwhile um Mm -hmm. kind of like uh if you move house or something and you just you're like do you know what I might as well just pay that person to come in and pack the stuff for me because they do that every time and you know you know they do it every day they're going to do it right they're going to look after your stuff and it's going to cost you a bit more but it's going to give you that peace of mind it was kind of like that kind of decision yeah. really so we looked yeah. for um we didn't even entertain the fact but there definitely was a time before if it was a year or two before I think we would have been like right well the only way we can do this is if we you know do it ourselves because it was an investment to work with the studio and um and so I like I can and I can see that conversation all the time when people are talking in the community about investing in a piece of software that's going to help improve their business or, you know, uh, bringing in a member of staff or bringing in an assistant or somebody to support them. It's always it's making that decision between is this a cost for me in my business mm-hmm. or is this an investment in my business that allows me to leverage my time? And for us, it was an investment in getting that part of that that piece of the puzzle sorted. And mm-hmm. we sort of looked around And by some absolute luck, I honestly don't know, we ended up working with a guy locally to me who happened to record audiobooks for Penguin. (laughs) So, um, which was just like, absolutely. And and this was interesting, Joe. I don't know if I said this to you. When I Mm. reached out to him and I said, um, you know, we're we're looking to record an audiobook. This is what it looks like. This is how long it is. I'm sure we only need a day. And he was like, no, you need more than that. Um, He's like, have you got any idea how long this process takes? Because he's going to do it properly. You know, he really wanted to make sure it was that high quality product that we, we really wanted as well. Just we didn't know it um he um oh, I've forgotten where I was going with this but it, it was just so interesting to have the conversation with him he kept this is what I wanted to say he came back Joe and he straight away sent me an email um it was like thanks for you you know I've looked you up online this looks oh, amazing I really like this about what you do um this is the way I would do it you know I'm an expert my my recommendation is you're going to need this much time to do it this is what I charge here's some testimonials and I was like done book us in yeah. uh, how yeah. do we pay and that was uh, from a sort of onboarding point of view mm-hmm. hey like it was such a good it was like best practice of what you'd expect you know when someone comes to reach out to you for bookkeeping services you yeah. want to be like that you want to be like boom and I actually went back to him and I said that was the best email I could have ever received I never expected to get anything like that I just expected a yeah I'm sure let's have a chat sometime you know it, I didn't yeah. expect him to be so on it with the onboarding so that was really impressive so um yeah that's great because I think we we both learned a lot about the process um and we definitely valued his he was saying things to us about our time about how fast we were speaking about like the way we said words he was listening out but as an expert listens out me and Zoe would never have picked any of that stuff up um also, that the technology, I mean, obviously the studio or the soundproofing, um, but then there was something, whenever we messed up, it would go back about three seconds and it would lead you in. And it got into, we got into such a rhythm that I could just stop and it would start again and you'd hear your own voice and then you'd join in with your own voice. We'd have never had anything like that. So the rhythm and the flow and he was he was just on it. And then the other things he knew about was like, how does this get uploaded so that people can consume it on Audible? He was very, he knew all the rules and regulate. And it's exactly like what we should be doing for our clients. So it was a great pro. And we came away thinking, thank goodness, thank goodness we had an expert. And, and you know, it took two full days. Me and Zoe both had colds. I actually had COVID, but didn't know. Poor, I don't, how Zoe didn't get COVID from my microphone that we were both talking into all the blooming time. And I stayed at her house. But we we were so grateful that as well, when we left and walked away, we felt like it was completely in hand and he knew what he needed to do. And we haven't, it's all in the bank ready for us, basically. This audio files are ready for us to, to go and upload when we decide to do it and it definitely felt like an investment rather than a cost absolutely yeah oh it was emotional though wasn't it joe we We, cried so much it honestly it was um like there's a bit where we read the intro where we both say we both read the um dedication at the same time and i listened back to it the other day when i was i had to go back because 
we'll tell you in a minute about some other changes we made and I had to record a bit again and I listened back and I was like oh our voices clash a little bit so it's just a little bit for me I'm like oh we're just kind of out of pitch with each other or something but we said it at the same time and I don't know how I caught didn't catch Covid from that <laughs> so we're just speaking into the same microphone but it was crying really nice, and cuddling <laughs> nice little touch but we honestly when like reading the the book reading about the rise framework and talking through those steps and explaining that it's like this is what you do this is what we talk about all the time um so for us it's like teaching content but from when we got to the stories uh, it broke us we were <laughs> crying we had to keep restarting things uh it was like it was really heavy not um, like they're really good reads the stories but we felt so involved because also mm. when you uh um, reading other people's stories you obviously don't want to sound like you're reading from a book because there's like definitely a you definitely you know read in a different way than you speak although we were definitely encouraged to kind of slow down because that's definitely we something fast. we need to work on mm -hmm. um but yeah it was um just reading people's stories you really want to do them justice and you want to yeah. try and read them in a way that perhaps that person when they had written that story for you the way they wanted to kind of express themselves and help people understand where they were coming from so yeah. we really tried to put ourselves in people's shoes to do that. And yeah, there were, it was, there were a lot Tears. of tears. And then we both, and then, not that, so we cried for other people's stories. And then when we said our own stories, because Alza story 36 and 37, oh my God, we cried again. It was emotional. <laughs> it was so emotional, but it was, but in a, I don't know, it was like a proud, I think as well, because we were talking through the ups and downs, there was points where we got to, and because we were repeating ourselves maybe and going over bits to make it sound right, sometimes you just said it in a way that just hit you differently and then we'd just be a blubbering. So we had to keep coming in and giving each other cuddle. Are you ready? <laughs> got rid of the snot? Do you need a biscuit? Do you need a coffee? What do we need? How do we get the next bit recorded? Because we're on a deadline, but have your little boo. <laughs> it was funny, wasn't it? It was really good. It was really good. I think it was a bit of a bonding experience as well, wasn't it? Was it good. So we had the book written, uh, ready, like all the manuscript was there. Um, then we had, um, then we got the audio book sorted. And then of course it was like bringing it together so that we could actually get the physical book. Oh yeah, book. because as we read the audio book, it was the best way to proofread the book. So like on another reading, level, another we level from everything. Editing, we've done yeah, mad, mad, Changes. wasn't it? And I think that, um, you know, I wrote a book before and I had a proofreader to proofread it. So that was all sorted. And we'd done that same process. But I think because I've never gone through that reading out loud phase, because I think, like you said, the reason it's emotional is you don't usually read your work out loud. You don't no. usually write, like you wouldn't write an email and then read or a blog post and then read it out loud. It's just not what you usually do. No. Um, but it did make you think, oh, should that have sounded like that? I'm not sure. Maybe that needs to change around. Or yeah, so that then resulted in more changes. And we were originally working towards a sort of September, October, sorry, uh, publishing date. And because we found those changes, it really, it changed things for us in terms of timing. Mm -hmm. So we did just decide rather than rush it, we'll push it out a little bit. And then of course, we, <laughs> then of course we had a whole front cover debacle. So um, <laughs> If you if you followed us on social media anyway, you might have seen that we uh, we did get a proof copy. Have you got yours by you? Do you keep it with you all the time? Do you spun a bed? Oh, it's I've got bed. um. We so we have this proof copy of the book. So this is what it originally looked like. If you're watching the um, if you're watching it. If you're listening to the podcast, it's kind of got just what you'd expect from us, like pinky cover, like the pinks we have on our podcast cover, and it's got blue writing, and it's all the right font that we would use, and all of that kind of thing. And you would say, yeah, it's on brand for everything we do at Six Figure Bookkeeper. And we'd had, we made sure it was designed along, like with our brand guidelines, which we'd invested a lot of money to have written mm -hmm. down for us. And so we knew exactly how we needed to use that across all of the different things we create for different places. And then, of course, we got the copy of the book and we were celebrating it and posting it online, saying, hooray, we've like we've got it. What an amazing feat. <laughs> we've got through it. And then Jo and I are on a Zoom call together and her phone starts ringing. And um, her phone starts ringing. And who's on the phone, Jo? Yes, Mr. James Ashford. Yeah, he gave he gave us a call. And I, yeah, so we were on a call together, weren't we? So that was it was handy. And I said, James, should we just should we just have a chat with Zoe? I'll put you on speaker. And he was like you two need to be on the front cover. Where are you? <laughs> and we were like, oh yeah, we do need to be on the front cover. And Zoe was not happy because we had already 
pushed the deadline, hadn't we? It was right, and you had had all the stress of it, and it was had, so stressful. It was the week we had said, yes, we're good to go. Tell the printer, yeah. print it. <laughs> yeah, 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 it, yeah. So it really, so it, was, it was, it was, it's got the end of me feeling like what I like, I'm open-minded. I'm ready to listen to you, but I'm not going to speak to you with a, with a happy tone. <laughs> and, that, yeah, I and, it, and it was fine. It was fine. And we, and so we had the, as someone's just said, hashtag front cover debacle. Love it. But yeah, we, um, I love that word debacle. That, that's not used enough. Um, so we, we changed it. And we, and we changed it. And again, but everything, this is the most important thing. Like again, pro, like the good, the bad, the ugly, sharing the journey publicly. It meant we had so many people like interact over it and tell yeah. us what they thought. And, you know, like James has done this before. So, of course, we were going to listen to his advice around that. Mm -hmm. And and actually, like, speak, talking about, like, the actual design work on the original front cover, we simply had never considered that as an option. It was a bit like with the audiobook. We'd never thought that we would create an audiobook. So we just hadn't, we hadn't, it hadn't been part of the conversation. We should put a picture of ourselves on the front cover. So James had said, send me your images. I'll knock something up in Canva. <laughs> So he went away and created something and we and then everyone was like that's so much better that's exactly what you should do and uh, and we were like but then of course we needed to make sure that it was in line again with the brand guidelines and uses the right fonts and all of that kind of stuff so that then delayed our process again but we got there we got yes. we got there and like you said joe we were able to say do you like this or this and just really get people's feedback and thoughts even because there were a few different um, tweaks you know this sort of copy that we've we've got this is the one that we're going to go with with the it's got a pink spine we had another one with a white spine and we were able to say what do you think and generally the consensus was pink spine it's going to stand out on the bookshelf you use pink for everything that's obviously yeah. what you need to do so it was nice to get people involved where perhaps we hadn't done that um before and when joe was saying about every, you know sharing behind the scenes of what you're doing those are the kind of things people are really interested in giving their opinion on it, it's yeah. amazing yeah, and, and and we welcomed it absolutely. Like you know, it's it's all part of the journey, all part of the process. And like Zoe said, it was just we hadn't even thought of it. And then afterwards, we're like, what are we doing? But that so we did that. So then we went to a Cantex North in Manchester, and um, we were we we spoke on stage, and we had loads of great interactions. And then there was a Go proposal lunch. And as I was walking to the Go Proposal lunch, I was walking with James and he was like, oh, I really, you know, <laughs> did I put my foot in it a bit? Did I, did I overstep? And I was like, you overstepped, but it's fine. It's worked out. It's brilliant. That's fine. And we were just having a chat. And while we were at this Go Proposal lunch, which was quite funny because I'd actually said to them, you know, is it okay if I bring some extra bookkeepers along? And they're like, well, we're actually full up. When I went there, it was just, our, it was so many of our community that was brilliant. Oh. There was so many. It was so lovely. And um, we was having such a good old chat. Anyway, I'd had a little glass of bubbles and I was, and I just thought to myself, how can I utilize the fact that we've had to move the date with James? And I just said, I had an idea. What about if um, we have the shard for our book launch <laughs> um, and like at Sage and um, yeah, you put it on for us kind of like, as it's your fault that we've had to delay our book launch kind of thing. Um, and he had said to me, let, if there's anything you can think of that we can help support you, um, let me know. So I thought I'd ask. Actually, what I did was I asked his team, the ladies behind him first and the ones that organise things. And they were like, yeah, 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 it will happen. Um, and he said, yeah, yeah, it's fine. So we are so excited that we're now going to be, so everything's an opportunity, you know, so we're now going to be having our book launch at the Shard. And we have invited some like different people that have supported us, but also the authors that are in the book, the 35 people, they have all been invited because we really want to share uh, this special moment with them. So it, that is, yeah. it's so exciting. Oh, really excited. So we were, um, we've been talking about the book. So if you're on our mailing list or in the community, you'll obviously have seen us saying that you can now buy, you can pre-order a signed copy. And we were expecting a lorry, like, honestly, a lorry. I'm expecting a lorry to turn up with a pallet of books because we've ordered a thousand copies of it. And and we've sold, lo we've sold loads already. Um, uh, and so we need to sign all of these books so that will be the next thing that you'll see um but we were expecting them today they're actually going to be coming tomorrow now and um of course there are postal strikes 
So now yes. we're thinking, um, you know, we've got we've got the challenge to work around in terms of posting these out to make sure they get to people on the right date. Um, so we're just looking at what our dates are. But you can pre-order a copy of the Bookkeeper Rises now. And if and actually, if you pre-order it on our website, um, you can buy it for eight ninety nine. Uh, it's going to be twelve ninety nine when it goes out on Amazon. But you can buy it for eight ninety nine, and we'll sign it, and we'll send it to you. And if you're in the UK, we'll send it to you for free, so we won't charge you for shipping or anything. So um, if you want to be, if you want to get one of those, maybe I'll just put the link up on the screen. But if you're watching, yeah. if you're listening to this, you can just go to our website sixfigurebookkeeper.com slash shop, and uh, and you can order a copy for eight ninety nine, and we'll get that out. Ooh, to you. Look at that! The next two strikes have been cancelled from a postman's wife. So, oh because i thought the oh. ones like it, this week this is going to turn into a, if you're listening you can skip forward for uh, like 30 seconds but i was expecting i think some have been cancelled and then there's some new ones on the 14th which is when we were expecting to post things so what our plan is is we think we're going to be able to get it out to you sooner than we thought um but watch this space if you've ordered ones so we've had a few emails from people saying i've ordered my book it isn't here yet. Can you tell me where it is? We have said on the website that we were expecting to send them out for the 17th of November, but if you, they might be going out sooner. We just don't know. Uh, so we're, let's, we'll get there. But I think this is the thing, like when you go through this kind of journey and it's the first time you've done that or you've put those things in place, there are always going to be things that change. I mean, things like strikes, you know, they happen. Um, you mm -hmm. just got to make a plan. <laughs> you just got to change things up a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely. And oh, there, there have been so many things and things that learning process. So like even today, I said to Zoe, well, when can we send the books out? If we receive them, when can we send them out? And she's like, well, they have to be published at the British Library or they have to be like logged in and all these things. It's all learning. And the thing is, I think this is like with anything, like you don't know what you don't know. But if you share your journey, there'll be people there to support you and point you and kind of push you in the right direction and help you out and you know you can and we have you know we've invested in like um what would you call Alexa is she a book coach book or publisher what do you well she's a book coach but she has a company that self will self-publish your books yeah yeah so we've, we've done if you think of all the people that have gone into this there's been the expert from that the brand guidelines then there's been us and the authors doing their bit then we've had the pod um, the audio guy his expertise we've had james's expertise we've had the expertise of our community like giving us feedback then we've had alexa um and you know there's been there's so many people that come in and this is the thing you don't have to know it all you can ask questions you know if you think about then we've got amanda hutchinson who did our photos oh sorry alexa's going oh i, I said her name sorry <laughs> my device that's got the same name is going off <laughs> um, um so there's been so many people that we've had to pull together to make this project work because we didn't know how to do it. Um, and, and that's why we're sharing it with you, because I think it I think, again, from the outside looking in, you might think, oh, well, it's OK for them. They know what they're doing. No, we didn't. We knew some of it and we kind of understood. And obviously, you know, Zoe has published a book before, but this was a different type of book because there were so many other people involved and the audio version. So. I think it's just interesting to share and be, you know, be open and honest like we do um, so that you can see what's what's really gone in behind it before you spend your £8.99 on a signed copy. Yes. There is a question, Jo. I'm going to, before we wrap up, if you've got any questions, pop them in chat and we'll try and answer them. Um, but it looks like the postal strikes have been cancelled, so that's quite exciting. Um, so thank you for that. I can't see everyone's names on here, but that's really useful to know. Um, question about the book. Someone says... What was the most exciting section of the book for you to write slash record? Good question. So when we went to the mm. studio, from my point of view, because when we'd written the book, like there are definitely areas which are like our uh, our areas, you know, within the six month success program, if you're part of the success lounge, you'll know that our Q&A sessions have changed up because we were like, how can we? Um, we used to run some Q and A's and it was like, come along, ask any question. And now we've decided that we want to have different streams because we want people to know I've got a question in this area. If I go along to that particular call, that's going to be the right place to know that I've got the right person answering my question. And, uh, and when we thought about that, we were like, what are the things that we're really passionate about that we really know we have the best expertise to support? So Joe runs a practice management session. I run a marketing session and we have other sessions as well around technical and things like that. But it's just like sometimes, you know, like these are the things that I could talk all day about. 
Mm. And when we wrote the book, like the things, you know, the branding and niching and uh, marketing parts of it were definitely the things where I was like, yes, love this part. And when we recorded the audio book, um, of course, you have to plan for these kind of things, but it's part of that learning journey. We had the manuscript printed out and Jordan, our recording guy, said, so who's going to read which parts? I need you to go and mark up a copy of the manuscript so I know who's going to read which part. And I was like, oh, haven't really thought about that. And uh, and of course, because there's two of us, it kind of needs to be one of us reads then the other one reads. And how mm-hmm. do you work that out? So I was looking through and I was like, well, what which bits would it make sense for each of us to read? Um, but then there are other parts where we're talking about a client that might have been difficult or a situation that was a challenge and what we did around it and then of course it makes sense to have that person's voice so when I was marking that up I was very tuned into these are the parts that we're gonna be able to sort of present in the best way because they're the things we'll get excited about and we'll be able to sort of where we'll be able to express ourselves in the best way so that that definitely was part of the consideration when it came to getting ready for recording the audiobook absolutely absolutely and I remember us doing that well, I was driving the car from Birmingham from a Pete Scott event back to your home in Wales and you're in the side, you're Zoe, Joe, Zoe, Joe oh, yeah. in the side of me. <laughs> and you're going, what about this bit? What about that bit? And we did it on the move, which was fun on a road trip, um, which was really good. Um, and uh, for me, I, I, the thing that hit me the most was my own story reading it out. That was the bit that got a lump in my throat where I was talking about the thought, you know, um, and it's funny because when we have trauma in business and 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 I do call it that because it does hit like that. When you have something that goes so badly wrong and you make mistakes, I do the classic thing of, I forget about it. I, mm-hmm. I like, I, I just get on with the work and I like draw a line and forget about it. So reading it was really, really difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, and saying the words and actually, um, and it's big. And w- so for me, it hit differently, but also because it was talking about in the past. So, and I thought, I just think, felt I hadn't really acknowledged it. I do talk about it, but it was in, it was in a very much like, I was really scared. Like I could have lost my house and I was worried about putting food on the table and it just really hit me. And I remember like the biggest lump in my throat and I thought, I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to be able to talk anymore today. So um, it was, yeah, it was emotional, um, more emotional than we thought. I think we thought we'd turn up and we'd do the job and yeah. it just hit us, took the rug away from under our feet and thought, whoa, that was harder than I thought. Um, so I wouldn't say it was exciting, but it was impactful, bigger than, and I think, and that's again about this is why it's so important to document the journey because if you don't document where you've been, you, you kind of sometimes your subconscious will protect you and forget about how hard things have been in the past and then you can't celebrate you can't no. celebrate what's happened I do I agree it's like therapy like going through that and, and actually sort of reading a story yeah I was upset yeah. too and I, and I yeah. think it's like oh I didn't think I was gonna feel like that um, yeah, exactly I thought it exactly. was just fact this happened and I did this and then this happened um but actually it's like oh I was actually there and I can remember exactly how that felt so that Mm. that is hot and there were parts where like we we spoke about clients that have been difficult and it's like oh god yeah I remember that like that really gets you um and I think for anyone like reading you'll when you read it you'll see and I think when you read other people's stories as well you'll see why we got emotional reading like reading them out because it was big and it would have been lovely wouldn't it if we'd been able to have people read their own stories mm. although maybe a massive therapy session yeah <laughs> it would have been I think that would have been just a bit too much logistic wise but it's something that everyone can think about for themselves for the future um someone just said we need to know how to get hold of the audio book okay so let us let us, let us tell you something <laughs> yeah 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 let us tell you something about that if you've bought a copy of the if you've ordered a pre um, if you've pre-ordered a signed copy of the bookkeeper rises which I think we'll probably be sending out end of next week realistically timing wise um we will have an offer for you um which will allow you to get the audio book for 99p um I think that's what what we are expecting to happen so watch your emails if you if you haven't bought like pre-ordered a copy of the book 
if you pre-order one, we'll be in touch with that, but we will be sending an email out. So watch your emails over the next week or so, and you'll find out how to do that because we we think that having the audio book, particularly if you're someone who listens anyway, um, mm-hmm. you'll you'll find that really valuable because you might just buy the book and put it on the shelf like we do with many with many books we buy them and we never get around to them because we're actually unlikely to I read my kindle that's what I do the only way I really read anything is on a kindle but I love having a book because it looks nice um but I'll read it on the kindle or I'll listen to it on the audio book while I'm running around doing you know walking somewhere or whatever I'm doing so I think it's just knowing what's right so actually um look out for the emails from us and and we'll let you know how you can get on way before it goes on audible because it won't be going on audible until the new year so um that's probably our best tip pre-order the book is the way to yeah. make sure you're getting those emails yeah Excellent. cool oh, oh. Well, thank you for joining us for our completely uh, unscheduled uh, conversation Random. about the bookkeeper rises and thanks for being part of the journey everyone who's been a part of it we're like we, we couldn't have done it without you we think that like if you read if you read the book or listen to the audiobook or however you do it uh, there's a section at the back where we thank everyone from our first podcast guest to the guy who said we should have a podcast in the first place to so everyone who's like supported us on the journey of um, building Six Figure Bookkeeper and come in and supported our, like, this community and helped us to, to do this. Um, it's been such a massive journey. So, yeah, thank you. And um, we will we'll see you next week for another episode of the podcast. <laughs> in yeah. line with the usual schedule. <laughs> we will see you then. Thanks, everyone.